Hey guys, and welcome back to a new video. In this video, I will show you why it is a mistake to collect your flows like this in Jetpack Compose with this collect as state function. I mean, I could just go ahead and tell you the solution, what you should do. You should use collect as state with a lifecycle, but I'm a big fan of not just using things, but also understanding why you should use them. This new collect as state with lifecycle API is now considered stable, which is why I also start using it. But let's first of all dive a little bit into how flow collection for Compose works and why this older approach is actually an issue in Android. So the little sample app I have created here is just a normal Compose product with two screens. Screen one just consists of a timer, so or rather just a, a number that counts up. That time is then shown on the screen just using a text. And when we then click on a button on that screen, we get to the next screen. This is just a very basic setup that can show us when flow collection actually starts in Compose, when it stops, and what the problems with our approach can be. Taking a look in our view model, we see that we just have our current time, which we simply emit here in our flow. So in the flow, we just run a while true loop as long as the flow is being collected. And every second, we just emit the new current time. And we also print that the flow is still active so that we can also see if the collection still happens in certain scenarios. We then call dot state in, which is just a normal flow operator to convert a normal flow or any type of flow to a state flow, which will on the one hand cache the latest value. So it will cache the last emission of this flow, so the current time in this case, and therefore also allow multiple observers to collect this flow at the same time with a given sharing strategy, which is this one here, so that all these observers get the same emissions at the same time. The sharing started lazily strategy just means that this flow will start executing as soon as the first subscriber or the first collector appears and then it will never stop. At least it will never stop until the um, curtain scope in which this flow is launched is cancelled. So in this case, until view model scope is cancelled. And I would say we just try this out and see what the issue with this approach is if we also collect it with collect as state. I will launch this on my device here, take a look here, and you can see this is just the screen we have and every second it will count up here. In our console, we get flow is active every single second, so we know that the collection is still executed. Um, let's also switch to Lockhead so we see this if the whole window is flooded with these locks. And if we then go to screen number two, we will see something interesting. We're now on screen two, but you can see in Lockhead that we still get a new lock every single second. And usually that's something you don't want for a flow collector that is only relevant for updating the UI. Usually as soon as you would go to this next screen, you would want the flow to stop collecting. But if we now go back, we see that it's still counting up and it also counted up while we were on the next screen. That is something we usually don't want. Let's take a look how we can fix this with our approach by going into our screen one view model. If you've listened carefully, then you know that I said that this lazily strategy just launches this flow and executes this time on this case as soon as the first collector appears and then never stops until the scope is actually cancelled. And you might probably know that in Android the view model scope is cancelled as soon as we pop the corresponding screen this view model is bound to from the back stack. However, if we navigate to a new screen, the old screen is still on the back stack, so the view model is also not cleared and therefore this flow not cancelled. What we can do in this case is we can replace this sharing strategy with while subscribed. This will only keep the flow active as long as there is at least one subscriber or one collector. And since we use collect as state, which serves as such a collector, which is a composable function, so it knows about our current composition and when, when it's not active on the screen anymore, this will also tell our flow when this subscriber disappears, when we navigate to the next screen. So if we now relaunch this, take a look in our lockhead, Take a look here, we can see that it's counting up, we can see the logs, but if we now go to screen number two, we see that we don't get any logs anymore because now the flow is basically cancelled since there is no active collector anymore. So does that mean we already solved our problem without even using the new API? No, it's sadly not that easy. Let's go through one issue this approach actually brings. If we now go back, we see that the flow is still at its old value. But what happens if we rotate our device? One issue is that if we have screen rotation here, then our activity will effectively be recreated. So that means it will go through its life cycle up to on destroy. So the activity will be destroyed and then simply on create will start again. Now that means there will be a time window in which there is no, no active subscriber, which is 
for example, in the on destroy state. And that also means that in this little period of time, this flow will not be collected. And therefore the emission will stop. And as soon as our activity is recreated and on, on create starts again, a subscriber will appear again. And that will also start the flow emission again. So in this case, this would lead to inconsistent timer results because, for example, if we rotate our activity when we already delayed for 800 milliseconds, then this flow would be collected again and we would effectively wait 1.8 seconds for the next emission. And this is really just an example. Don't build your timers like this with just having a delay function. So one problem of this approach is that if the activity is recreated, for example, when we rotate our screen, then the flow is collected from the beginning again, which we usually don't want. So to solve this, you will often see something on the internet also recommended by Google to pass in a parameter here, a stop timeout milliseconds. And usually you see the value of five seconds, so 5,000 milliseconds. What this will do is that after, hmm, what this will do is that after the last collector of this flow disappears, the flow will still be, um, executed for five more seconds. So this will be enough time to let the, where there is no collector of this flow. So to solve this, you will often see something on the internet also recommended by Google to pass in a parameter here, a stop timeout milliseconds. And usually you see the value of five seconds. So 5,000 milliseconds. What this will do is that after the last collector of this flow disappears, the flow will still be um, executed for five more seconds. So this will be enough time to let the activity fully rotate and recreate. And then it will subscribe to this flow again. And since we have the stop time of milliseconds, the flow won't be interrupted. So with this approach, it will just work fine to rotate our uh, phone when the timer is running without the flow being interrupted. So if we rotate this here, then we will see the emissions are just coming in perfectly fine. So now we basically use this approach, which is recommended by Google, but why do we then have this API, which I teased at in the beginning? So if we take a look here, we are still using collect as state, but I recommend it to use collect as state with a life cycle. What does this API do? What collect as state does not do? Well, let's take a look at collect as state. And now I will finally show you the issue with this approach. If we run our app and we take a look here in our logs, and we put our app in the background, just minimize it, you can see the flow collection is still active. And that is something you usually don't want for flows that um, are just relevant for UI updates. And the reason for that is that this collect as state function has no information about the current lifecycle state of our activity or fragment. So while our UI does not update itself using the, the flow's results, the flow is still being collected. So this this piece of code here is still going to be executed when the app is in the background. And it of course depends on the flow if you want that behavior or not. Well, in this case, if you want the timer to be active in the background, you would rather want to use something like a foreground service or so. So let's now go to main activity, replace this with collect as state with a lifecycle. And for that, you, by the way, need a new dependency, which is this one here. So the lifecycle runtime compose dependency with this version, because in this version, this is stable. Before you needed an experimental annotation, which is why I did not use that in my previous videos, but now it's totally fine to use that. And if we now finally relaunch our app, take a look here, take a look in our logs, and we minimize the app, then for five more seconds, since we use this while subscribe with five seconds, we get logs. But after that, the logs disappear. So this combination is really the officially recommended approach from Google right now that you use collect as state with lifecycle in combination with this while subscribed in five seconds. And it's probably worth mentioning that you don't need all this extra setup here for the normal uh, state flows, which you often see something like private val counter is mutable state flow zero. And then you have a public exposed version, which is just counter.as state flow. With this as state flow operator, which can only apply to normal state flows and not to normal flows like this here, this is not a problem at all because there is no underlying flow that performs specific actions or um, that has some kind of reactivity. You only need to consider what I mentioned here. So in this case, you should still use the collect as state with lifecycle API, but you don't need to use the state in operator for all of your state flows, but rather only if you want to convert a normal flow to a state flow.
And finally, you might wonder why is that not the default? Why is there collect as state, which is wrong? And then there is an, a separate collect as state with a lifecycle API, which is the one we should always use. And the reason is that you should not think about Compose as Android specific. Compose can also be used for desktop. They plan to make it work for um, web and they even plan to make it work for iOS. And Android is the only platform which has such a specific lifecycle. Maybe iOS has that as well, I'm not sure. But in Android, we really have this typical activity and fragment lifecycle. So this problem of having this difficult collection logic is only a problem specific to the Android domain. So you can consider this collect as state, uh, collect as state function as the normal function to just collect a flow in a composable. But this one is the Android specific API, which you should use in Android projects. So I know this video was in the end, just swapping out the collect as state function with this new function and uh, talking a bit about these sharing strategies here. But I think it's quite important to understand how flows work under the hood, because you really don't want to blindly use new functions or new APIs in your project without understanding why and what they actually do. So I hope this video helped you to understand that and if so, you will definitely also love my more advanced Android premium courses, which you can find using the first link in this video's description. And apart from that, I wish you an amazing rest of your week. I will see you back in the next video. Bye bye.